today we're going to be talking of how to go beyond agile and uh, during turbulent times with enterprise agility. But in order to do that, guys, I wanted to tell you a little bit of some story that I hope you enjoyed. Specifically, how I started with this change consultant or agile coaching or trying to help organization. I'm coming from IT background, but I have not developed any code for maybe 20 years. And I started being, you know, many years ago as a software engineer when I was young. Don't ask my age, doesn't matter. And I remember that when I started getting this consultancy on companies and trying to understand how companies work, I was always very, very happy, super happy. Of, I go to companies and I believe that if I went to a company, um, then I could be able to change the company. And my mother always telling me, was always telling me, hey, don't be that positive. Companies, places, are people are complex. And, and I was very, very happy to go to companies in the very beginning. And I thought that if I had one idea, I would be able to change someone or something very easily. That in my head, it worked very good. So I was able to change the whole organization in two days. But the problem is when you move to the organization, this is a completely different story. Moving to an organization, it means that you need to know a lot about social dynamics, about software, about politics, about so many things. But at the end of the day, you need to understand that you need something crucial and a skill that is crucial. And the skill that is crucial is first, you need to try to understand how things work in a company. Maybe uh, if you are in a company, you need to understand that there are certain rules in organizations, maybe you like it or you don't like it, that there are certain ways of communication and maybe you like it or not, but the first rule for a change consultant or an agile coach trying to help a company. And I promise today I will show you very, very advanced frameworks. We're gonna start with something very easy and then we're gonna be moving there. Just stay with me and you're gonna see. So then in every company you go, the first step is that you, you speak the same language. You move like the people in this organization. And you make sure that if you find some teams or people that feel uh, afraid of change, then you try to understand how they work. And then you try to make sure that you understand also what they, their fears are. When we work with our organizations, we also need to understand that every organization uses a different language Every organization use different, have different values. The dynamics are different. So the beauty of being a consultant or an agile coach on HR or a scrum master, it is being able to transform. It doesn't mean that you are not gonna be yourself, right? But you're gonna be able to adapt, adapt the way you speak, adapt the way you move. Also adapt the way how you present your ideas. If, for example, you need to present certain ideas to a company about change, maybe if in that company they don't get used to the word change, you're going to use something else. You're going to try to see things in the way that are compatible somehow with the way of communication, with the way they express. And then, yes, you need to be disruptive. But the first thing you need is to speak the same language. And then, one of the questions I generally get whenever I am in companies is how do we scale agile or agility outside IT teams? And this is an interesting question because we know a lot of how to deal with software teams, but it's very hard to expand these ideas outside the organization. And why is this? Well, let me tell you that we did a lot of research and we, find out, we found out a couple of interesting things. The first thing we found out 
and, and I personally uh, was involved with much of these the research and trying companies is that people coming from different backgrounds. So for example, if I am an engineer or if I'm a marketing person, maybe coming from different backgrounds means that those two people have different ways of solving problems. So for example, give a problem to a group, a group of developers, software developers, and they're gonna solve it plus minus different teams of software developers plus minus in the same way using the similar ways of thinking. Give the same problem to a group of marketing people and they're gonna solve it in a completely different way use, using different ways of thinking. Give the same problem to a lawyer or a group of lawyers or legal department in a company and they're gonna solve it in a completely different way. Why it happens? Well, it's because what we studied influence the way you think. And one of the key characteristics that we need when we need to work or expand agility outside the company is that you really need to understand why people think in different ways, but also how do you make sure that all these people can work together? Because enterprise agility is about diversity, it's about maybe having a, a, a team, it's what we call value stream, uh, how we, from, since we create a product until we put that product in the market, we are gonna need a lot of people with completely different way of thinking. Maybe we need two people from marketing, one lawyer, maybe we, we need someone coming from other department of the organization and the software developers, and all these people need to work together. Now, how we do that? How we make sure that all these people can work together? Because if we want to make the company flexible, we need to make sure that all the people in the organization are flexible, not just the IT department. And that happened many times to me. I remember a long time ago, they called me from, from a German company. And in the German company, they told me, we want to make, we want to make the, the company more flexible. And I said, okay, what should we do? And they say, okay, we want to make the developers more flexible. Oh, okay. And what happened to the rest of the organization? Uh, well, we're gonna do it later. But that's not gonna work very well. It's like having, imagine a car with a, a puncture in one of the wheels. Even if you have a fantastic engine in the car, you're not gonna go that further. You need to make sure that the whole organization is more flexible. And when we were long time ago founding the Enterprise Agility University, I started discussing that for me, from my perspective, we have something called Agile, but in Enterprise Agility University, we call it Classic Agility. Why we call it Classic Agility? Because Classic Agility is coming from 2001. And this is different than Enterprise Agility. And I will show you why and what you can use. So when you have Classic Agility, you basically have like a portfolio where you put all the techniques inside that you have been learning since, since 2001. And we should remember that if we go to the, ori the original Agile Manifesto, in the original Agile Manifesto it says, we are uh, developing or creating new ways of de de developing software. So agility is coming, Agile is coming from certain ways of thinking connected with people that uh, think in terms of software. The problem is that when we try to go in the agile direction, which is great, I've been using agile ideas for a long time, it's a little bit restricted. And I will tell you why. You put in this portfolio, in this bag, all the techniques that you have been learning to make the company more flexible. And you start taking up Every time you have a problem, you take one technique. For example, I want to scale this group of people. You take one technique of the portfolio and you use it. And then you take another and you use it. The main issue is that many of these techniques work with IT teams, but are very difficult to expand to the rest of the company. So classic agile or classic agility is good for software team and maybe a little bit outside, but not to scale the whole organization. So classic agile has a lot of knowledge, but there are certain things that are not included into classic agility. For example, how the brain works during change, how we can make sure that two people with completely different mindset that have been influenced for their whole life 
um, in the way they work or what they studied are going to work together. How you, if you have people that have been doing repetitive actions for a long time and you want these people to work with other person that is very flexible and has been all the time doing uh, incremental ways of thinking, how we make them work together. So there is a research which says that someone working in a factory and doing a repetitive work has the same levels of activation in the brain as someone in comatose state in a hospital. So imagine that it is very challenging and we want to realign the whole company and make sure that everyone in the company uh, can work well. Now, how we do that? How we make sure that we can realign the company in record time and make the whole company flexible. And this is where enterprise agility uh, makes a difference. Instead of trying to use the wrong tool, we try to use, and, and don't misunderstand me, Agile is great, but it has certain restrictions, okay? And then sometimes we try to solve a problem with the wrong tool. And this is what enterprise agility is trying to address. So we also have a classic business agility. Business agility is more a classic agility. It's techniques that you have been gathering, someone has been gathering and use it. But there are so many things in enterprise agility that are not there. Um, and then classic agility, as I said, try to solve these problems in no very efficient way. Yes, and I know you know this, that this uh, photo is from India, hmm? it's what you call Jugar. And Jugar is it, sometimes what we do with Agile. We try to Jugar Agile to adapt it to the rest of the organization. Um, or something like this, yes? We end up with a lot of processes. Well, this is Agile, yeah, but we ended up with a lot of processes. How we do that? Well, one of the things we, we need to understand is not always the techniques we are embracing are the techniques that are useful for us that are going to feed the way of working and changing the culture. And not always what Classic Agile says is a good idea. We have a lot of research in many aspects. So the first thing we need to understand is about accelerated change. There are many things that we need to understand when we are talking about accelerated change. The first thing we need to understand is classic agility do, do not have in mind one very important concept, which is called exponentiality, which means that the markets are changing almost by the hour. So for example, and, and this is coming, you can see this accelerated change, and it's divided in five different areas. And I talk in leading exponential change in my book about this. The first thing is obviously an expected event. If one, there you are, an expected event. And then the second one is short work cycles. Companies are using before they used to, I remember in 2000, I wrote the first book about .NET in Spanish. And then I remember Microsoft used to send me a package with the new versions of .NET every month. Now, releasing once a month, it would be crazy. You want to release once a week or once a day. So companies are doing very short work cycles. The problem with the very short work cycles is that you are impacting the market. But it's not just about impacting the market. You are impacting your competition. So when you impact the market, your competition are on the other side. Look at you and say, ah, oh, mm, you release this. Oh, I'm going to release something better. And then you start accelerating this process. You impact the market, you accelerate the market, and then someone is going to impact the market to you, and it's going to create disruption. Then we also have other aspects here. Like, for example, people are interconnected in different parts of the world, so different mindsets connect, and they create fantastic things. And we also have artificial intelligence and big data. What it does, and this is a problem, is the market change faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And this creates two big problems for companies. The first problem we can see is about decreased alignment with the strategy. As if the strategy is changing all the time, imagine I'm, I'm a company selling shoes and suddenly I realize that I do not have to sell shoes anymore because they're bringing cheap 
shoes from somewhere else, and I need to start creating computers. You need to change the strategy. Maybe you need to change the strategy once a month before it was once per year or every two years. So people, when things change every day, they start not feeling comfortable with that. So the, the alignment between the strategy and people, the gap start getting bigger and bigger. The second thing is about the number of um, the conflict in the company. If things change all the time, many companies, they start fighting for the resources of people. Imagine there is one person that knows about databases in the company, let's say. And suddenly everything changes and two parts of the companies need that person. They're gonna start fighting for that. And the important thing here is that when they start fighting, organizational health decreases. So the, the level of health of the organization decreases, people start taking it personally, and that is the opposite we want in an organization, otherwise the organization is not gonna become flexible. The second thing is that human beings are not psychologically prepared for exponential change. So in here is where we develop many techniques in order to make sure that people understand those techniques and they can use those techniques, especially change consultants or scrum mastering companies, so they can adapt. One of the things we generally use is uh, what we call the boys model. I developed this long time ago. The boys model, it means behaviors, objectives, impact, and sustainability. What it means, first of all, in order to understand if the company is changing every day, if you do not have the right behaviors, then any impact in the market is going to create a chaos in your company. I'm going to reduce the possibility for you, the connection between people. And then uh, what's going to happen here is you're going to be able, you are not going to be able to, to continue that for a long time, delivering things to the market. So we place a strong focus on behaviors. So the first thing we recommend this framework to work you in the company, and this is also part of um, our models, the boys focus on what's the behavior. Okay, you want DevOps, you want the technology, you want whatever, what, what is the behavior you want to see in your organization? The tiny behavior, what's the change? Which tiny behavior you want to see? So you focus on that behavior. Okay, I will try for my employees to have this behavior because behaviors are sustainable thing. And if markets are changing all the time, you need to have the right behaviors. So you say, okay, I want this behavior, X behavior. For example, in a team, I want my team finish at the time that they have to finish and they go back home. I don't want them to work extra hours, okay? I just want this behavior. If I do the right thing, if I use the right technologies, if the product have lower number of bugs or technical debt, then I'm gonna achieve that. But then this is what I'm going to achieve. Imagine I don't have it. The second thing in here is about linking this behavior you are trying to achieve with one objective. So which objective I'm trying to achieve in the company? So if I change this behavior, it's because I want to achieve this uh, objective in the company, okay? The number three is about that people have to see a win-win. If people do not see a win-win, they don't get anything quick win, they are not gonna change. And the last part, it is about making sure that it's sustainable. So this is a fantastic framework where we use behaviors in company. Companies that need to change all the time, we need to tackle the right behavior first before of instrumenting any framework, before of making any big change. Do we have the right behaviors? If we want to adapt every week to a new situation, do we have the, the right behaviors? And th th this is where the voice model is very powerful. But in order to understand that, you need to understand first something very important. And it is that in enterprise agility, we need to understand what happened in the brain to people. As I said before, during change, people get the stress, people then get high levels of cortisol in the brain, if things are not happening. And then we have a lot of research about the brain and how things are working. And let me tell you something. If the strategy of your organization is gonna be changing all the time, 
then the problem is you need to come up with a technique that I will show you today to realign the company in record time. And let me tell you something. Um, when I published the first edition of my book many years ago, in between, I traveled all the, all the world and I saw that the major problem company have is resistance. So how we can make sure that we reduce resistance to change? How we can make sure that people walk all in the same direction? So I started traveling around the world and I started meeting people, different cultures. I went to Asia, uh, I was in Europe, I was in Latin America, I was in America. And then I started asking them, what worked for you? And what didn't work for you from my book, from the techniques I, you learned from me, from whatever, the course. And then the question was, well, that's not a very nice photo. <laughs> but the question is, what did work for you guys? This is the question. And then I realized that there were some important things that were in the book that worked very well. And this is what I wanted to show you today. And this is what we call a powerful change strategy, how we can create a strategy. And I will tell you that in just five minutes. So you understand the basic. And from tomorrow, hopefully, you're going to be able to make sure that you understand how to do it and how to make a change in a company where we can achieve lower levels of resistance and you can change this organization or the strategy in record time. And that's the objective for the coming five minutes. And in fact, if you take a look at this photo, I was explaining this technique to someone there in, in Hong Kong, in China. And look at this. I never realized that. When I was, while I was explaining this, these two guys were holding the head. Probably they were saying, oh my God, how I didn't know that before. And, but I discovered that long time after, right? So let me show you. A cultural change is never pushed. If you have to push your cultural change, guys, forget. A cultural change is always influenced. Then, if you have to take a different direction, you need right frameworks, and we need to focus on enterprise agility. And then, I want to tell you something very important. How we do that? Well, let me skip this part. Enterprise agility requires an understanding of eight different dimensions, right? And this is when, don't try to find this master book. This master book is from our courses. The first dimension we need to understand is that there is no one type of agility, but five different types of agility. The first type of agility is technical agility, what you call classic agility. In here, you need to make sure that people make software flexible and you use frameworks that make the process of software flexible and cheap and easy to adapt. But this is not the only type of agility you get. You get also outcomes agility. Outcomes agility are specific techniques that help the organization to change the strategy from A to B in a quick way. But also you have a structural agility. A structural agility is how I can change the procedures in a way that they can adapt quickly. I always say, if you are in an organization where people need to adapt, imagine you are creating new roles and new procedures you should not create new roles and procedures that impact someone without asking them. Imagine you're gonna impact a department of 10 people and you create the procedures and you force that people to follow your procedures. That's not gonna work in any company, in any department. You always need to integrate people into the creation of these roles, the creation of these procedures, make sure the roles create a lot of prestige for them etc. And structural agility is about being able to adapt this. All the roles, all the procedures in the company. Then we have, and this is very important, social agility, how people connect, how people talk, the way they talk, do they talk to each other? If I have two teams that they need to work together, do they talk in their, directly or in their, indirectly? And this is, we have a huge theory about that. The more indirect way, indirect way of communication, teams use, then the less 
effective they are going to do. So if I talk to someone by email, uh, then it's going to be very ineffective. If I want to make it smoother and better and more flexible, we need to have, have what we would call social densities. People connect very well. They talk to each other. Before sending an email, they take the phone and, and talk to them or call them in Skype. This is what we want. Otherwise, without uh, social um, agility, you won't be able to achieve real flexibility in the organization. And we have a huge, huge theory here. And finally, the important thing here, and without this one, none of the other works, is mental agility. And we have done a lot of research. This is connected with neuroscience, with a lot of research on the brain, and how we make sure that people can adapt to new situations. And we have a technique called reframing, where we try to make sure that a person can see when the situation changes, can see the, the, the situation from different perspectives without getting higher levels of stress. And when we are talking about mental agility, we develop a specific technique, but I want you to understand, mental agility is the foundation for any company. When people in companies are not flexible, then the company is not going to be able to achieve much. And then we need to use specific techniques for that. But the important thing here is mental agility is a possibility for one person to be able to put in the situation of another person. And when I say this, I'm not talking about empathy. I'm talking about seeing the perspective of the other person and feeling the values of the other person as if they were their own. So for example, if I'm talking to someone, I can feel their values, I can feel, feel their values as if they were mine and their perspective about if they were mine, if not empathy. Empathy is just, I can see their point of view. So we have seen that the more people can uh, do reframing, which is this of feeling the values as yours from the another person, that increases something called neuroplasticity and make the pe uh, people more flexible. And they are better at reacting to uh, market conditions. So exponential market are they are going to stay, they are not going to disappear. Then individuals need to make sure they quickly adapt to market disruptions. For that, we put a lot of emphasis on mental agility. And in fact, if you are interested, I can uh, send you uh, later, contact me. I'm going to have in, uh, um, a conversation after this conference. We're going to be here. I can give you an article where you can read about the basics of uh, mental agility and which techniques to use in the organization. And then something that is very important is companies cannot deliver innovation all the time. So we need to make sure we deliver strategic, a strategic innovation, which means maybe you're going to be able to deliver innovation once a year as it's going to be sustainable. Because maybe you cannot do more, but it's going to be very strategic. And this framework is what we call enterprise agility. Without this framework, companies are not going to be able to adapt to the market. And I would like to. I'm